Hi, Lisa. How are you? Good. How are you doing? If you hold on to good memories too long, you might never match them. And if you hold on to bad memories for too long, you might not get over them. You're going on a journey. A journey through memory. All you have to do is follow my voice. We're closed. I know. I'm sorry it's late. We have time for one more job. that what if or that thought that was going through your head when you kind of started developing this story? You know, I've always been fascinated by memory. I think a lot of people are, you know, it's it's that place in our mind that we tend to take refuge in all the time. Every day we're flooded by memories. And at the time it's particularly resonant for me because my grandfather passed away while I was pregnant. So there were all these moments that were seemed to be slipping away that I wanted to hold on to. Uh, and when I went to his house, he named his house Suki Lin. And it didn't make sense because he had a very modest house, but it had a plaque on it that said Suki Lin. And he always would tell me he just liked the sound of the name. But when after he passed away and I went there, I found an old photo of a woman called Suki Lin hidden away in the attic. And I started wondering about their story and about how some chapters in our lives that mean so much to us, they just vanish. And wouldn't it be incredible if they didn't have to vanish forever, if we could revisit them? When the waters began to rise and war broke out, nostalgia became a way of life. There wasn't a lot to look forward to. So people began looking back. Nothing is more addictive than the past. No, 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 put me back. Put me back. I have to tell you, I started watching Westworld as I started, as I watch Reminiscence. <laughs> and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to change my mind in a few chapters, but but I want this th these things to be real, you know? I really want that. And I'm curious <laughs> on whether or not, I'm, I'm curious on whether or not you, as the storyteller, as you go deeper in these topics, does that change the way you see them? You know, writing in science fiction, both Westworld and Reminiscence, have science fiction aspects to them is less and less for me about predicting into the future because the rate at which technology is developing is starting to eclipse the rate at which we can imagine it. It used to be you would imagine something and it would take generations for it to catch up. Now, you know, when I was writing Reminiscence, the idea that Miami would be endangered by rising waters was just conjecture. Um, but just a month ago or so, the New York Times had images of the flood barriers that Miami is erecting to keep the water from flooding the city. And they look a lot like the flood barriers that we designed in Reminiscence itself. Uh, so, you know, there are some aspects of the films that I, that I think would be great if they could come uh, to pass. But I think some of it, too, is a cautionary tale about the choices we make now and the effects they might have on the future. She's moved on, and you should too. People don't just vanish. To find where she'd gone, I had to know where she'd been. I'm talking about cautionary tales. What do you think is uh, the, the the most dangerous thing about about uh, holding on or holding too tight to memories? I think it's like May says at one point in the script. She talks about how um, if you hold on to good memories too long, you might never match them. And if you hold on to bad memories for too long, you might not get over them. You're going on a journey. All you have to do is follow my voice.